Metal Drummers! Hey, what's going on? My name is Gabe from DrumBeatsOnline.com and today we are getting a little controversial and talking about five huge mistakes that most metal drummers make. Now I play in the metal band, I Prevail, so I'm speaking from experience on this one. So let's dive right into it. The first big mistake that I notice a lot of metal drummers make is that they have a lack of versatility in their playing, specifically a lack of versatility in genre. A lot of metal drummers struggle to play other genres of music, but the more versatility that you can have, the more that you can bring to your metal drumming as a whole, because trust me, you don't wanna be like this guy. Okay, so I think most metal drummers aren't taking it to that level, at least I sincerely hope you aren't, but I do think a lot struggle to adapt to different genres of music, and that's because metal is very specific. Oftentimes you have to play very straight, very fast, and very hard, which is great, there's a time and place for that. But if you are playing any other genre, that might not always fit in. So, here are three things to think about. One, when you are playing another genre, think, Am I playing too robotic? So this is something that a lot of metal drummers can struggle with because they're used to playing really straight. So try to focus on getting that groove down, maybe lowering some of those dynamics to get rid of that robotic feeling. Two, how are your dynamics? Are you hitting too hard? It's super natural that us as metal drummers are used to hitting hard, but again, there's a time and a place for it. And the third thing to think about is, am I playing too many notes? A lot of the times in other genres, simpler is better. But conversely, a lot of the times with metal, more notes can be better. Not always, but that can be drilled into our head. So think about these three things when you are playing with other genres. But now, let's talk about the second mistake. The second mistake is having no feel. Now, having good feel and good groove as a drummer is going to completely separate you from everyone else in anything that you play, but specifically within metal. I notice a lot of metal drummers, kind of like what I said earlier, is they're very robotic. There's not a lot of feel there. And I think if you can incorporate more feel into your playing, it will make a bigger difference. So let's take a look at some of these metal drummers who are doing a good job of incorporating feel into their metal playing. So Matt Halpern is a perfect example of this. What you'll see is he has his hi-hat pedal going the whole time, even as he's playing this cool stack breakdown groove. On top of that, he had ghost notes. These are two things that I think really help your feel, especially in metal grooves. For him, having that constant pedal hi-hat going with the ghost notes, I think helped add a lot of feel to the groove overall. Now let's check out what Luke Holland's doing that I think adds more feel into his metal grooves. Hear those ghost notes in between those hits? So with Luke Holland, you'll notice something pretty similar. He's adding in those ghost notes and he had rudiments in his fills as well. He threw in some cool flam stuff on the snare. These are things that I think most metal drummers wouldn't play, but can go a really long way to add some groove. So as we just saw with these two metal drummers who have a lot of feel in their playing, one of the big things was ghost notes. So I figured I would show you a quick metal beat so you can work on incorporating these ghost notes within your playing so that you can have more feel in your metal grooves. So what we're gonna do is just keep a steady quarter note on the stack, china or crash, whatever you want it to be, and have the snare on beat three as a nice halftime groove. And then we are going to intersperse some of these double kicks with ghost notes, even having like basically a ghost note blast at the very end to really test your dynamics. So let's hear what it sounds like. The 
third mistake most metal drummers make is being completely reliant on the double bass pedal. Now this totally makes sense because metal has a lot of double bass in it and that's awesome. It's a really good skill to have as a drummer. However, it can be a crutch. I've seen a lot of drummers who will walk up to someone else's kit that doesn't have a double kick and they're like, oh man, I, I can't really play like what I normally would be able to play with a double kick. You don't want it to hinder you. You only want it to be another tool that you have in your tool belt, but that you don't need every single time that you are behind the kit. So I would encourage you to try taking the second pedal off your kit for a little bit and see what happens. This can actually up your creativity in your metal grooves as well to where you're not always playing the same beats in the same fills because now you're limited and once you are limited you are forced to be creative plus with removing the second pedal you can move your hi-hat a little bit closer and this can actually change the feel of your playing the fourth mistake is lack of dynamics this is something i've talked about a lot but like i said as metal drummers we're really used to hitting really hard which the benefit of this is that when we go into any other type of setting we know how to bring the energy when it's needed most this is really really important however if we are playing something else that calls for quieter dynamics, so to play a little bit softer, this is something that we have to work on a little bit. So I have a little bit of an exercise to help you not only learn how to play loud and soft, but help you work on your transitions there. I think sometimes it can be hard to go from playing pretty quietly to pretty loud. But if you work on this exercise, it can help you with those transition points. So let me show it to you. And of course, something else you can do to help you play a little bit softer, a little bit quieter on the kit is actually just playing along to music that is a little bit more chill, sticking to songs that strictly focus on groove and lower dynamic playing, such as the record of 21 by Adele or John Mayer's Continuum. I've brought these albums up in the past because I think these are great albums to just work on your pocket. Plus, a lot of the songs are pretty low in dynamics. And the fifth mistake is lack of fill versatility. So a lot of these have been about versatility and this one we're specifically talking about fills. A lot of metal drummers play the same fills over and over again, whether that's just single strokes around the kit or fraction fills, which means you play like four notes on the hands and two on the feet. So four over two or two over two. These are two types of fills that metal drummers play all the time. So what are some tips and ways that we can break up our fills to make them sound a little bit more unique? Well, a couple tips are one, if you really wanna to stick to those fraction fills, so something on the hands over something on the feet, you could try new fraction fills that you normally don't try. Maybe three on the hands with two on the feet or could be something weird like five on the hands, one on the feet. Anything for you to kind of change up what you are currently doing. Something else that you could do is work on rudiments in your fills. Now I know this can be pretty vague and as metal drummers, sometimes all the ghost note fills can really bring the energy down because the dynamics are down. But if you are playing some type of rudiment fill with double kick over it, that can add a dynamic lift and that way you can still be creative with what you're doing without bringing the energy too far down. But instead of just telling you examples, I figured I could show you an example of something that I think is a unique fill that you could use for metal that still has power, but also incorporates rudiments. So what we are gonna do here is hit an open hi-hat with a kick underneath it, right left on the snare, then another kick drum. Then we are playing two Swiss triplets between the rack tom and the snare, except we're playing them as 16th notes, not as triplets. So we have a flam right left, playing that twice. Then we just have a kick right left on the bell of the ride in the stack, then a kick, flam, kick. And when we put it all together, it sounds like this.
So which one of these mistakes do you think that you need to work on? Let me know in the comment section below. I think for me, I actually started the process reversed where I started off as like a pocket and rock drummer who then had to try to learn metal stuff. So I've had to learn the things that you're already good at, the double bass pedal stuff, the playing really fast. So it's a little bit flipped for me, but I would love to have a conversation with you in the comment section below. And if you wanted to take your metal drumming to the next level, I have two courses called Mastering the Double Bass Pedal Level 1 and Level 2 that are available on my online drum school, DBO Academy. Currently, doors are closed, but you can click right up here to join the waitlist totally for free, and I will send you a free lesson. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one. Stay true. I almost forgot that. Okay, see ya.